Welcome to this session on placing walls. Now, in order to start placing geometry like walls in the model, you'll need to be able to use AccuDraw and AccuSnap and learn how to use the mouse buttons, which is basically a data point and a reset. So I'm gonna go over that briefly. For more information or for a more detailed demonstration, I would look at the basic AccuDraw video that's on the Learn server. But I'm going to do this right now with just using the, the Place Smart Line tool. And then we'll, we'll place the walls. So first thing is when placing geometry, and in this case just a line, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, is that you'll be able to snap two elements. In this case, we're going to snap to our grid. And you'll see how as I move my cursor close to that intersection, I get a little yellow X there that indicates I'm snapped to the intersection. And I know it's the intersection by the icon just above that indicates that's an intersection snap. If I come out here to the end point of the grid, notice the icon there changes. It's a little half arc with some points on it that indicates a key point snap. So I'm at the end point of that particular grid line there. Now we do have snap settings down here, so I'm gonna pull this up. So here's those different snaps, the intersection, the key point. We can do a center snap, nearest, origin snap, various different snaps, and you can set up a default snap. So I would recommend the multi-snap one because it will snap to several of those different snaps, the intersection, the key point, the nearest, and so forth. So if you select that as your default, then you won't have to, to worry about changing it too much. So if I were to get my snap there on that intersection, and then that's the point that I wanna select, so I'm going to use what we call a data point, and that's a left mouse click. So one click, and you can see now I've got the, the line on my cursor and I could start drawing. Also notice that I'm seeing the AccuDraw compass. And so for one, it's rotated into my horizontal plane there, the XY plane. And so I can only pick points on that plane when the compass is rotated that way. I can rotate that compass around by some shortcut key. And so one is F, it'll rotate it to my front, F for front. Then I could draw in that plane essentially, or S for side. T for top. So we want to be in top in this case. And you'll notice on the bottom of the interface is, is the AccuDraw input. So it can go X, Y. Notice how just moving my cursor changes where the, um, the input is. So if I wanted to draw this line, say 10 feet along that axis there, I just have to put my, my cursor in that direction You'll kind of see when you're snapped onto the axis, if you want to be on the axis. You can also hit the enter key, which will lock you on the axis. And then you just type in the distance. So I just type 10 on my keyboard. And now you'll see how my, even though I can still move my cursor, that line has stopped at 10 feet. And then again, it's a data point. And I've drawn that line 10 feet. I could move now, say in my Y direction and hit enter. And notice how my input is in the, the Y input there, and I could type in 10. And again, a left click to accept. When I'm finished and I want to stop drawing the line, it's a right click on my mouse to reset, okay? And I'm just gonna control Z to undo all of that. So that was a little introduction to AccuDraw, get you started, and now we'll go ahead and place a wall. So I'm gonna come up to my architectural ribbon and I'm going to select the wall tool. And before I place that wall, I want to I want to set up some of its properties. So the first thing is to select the wall that I want. And, and there's a number of different walls in the library. There's different ways to group them. So for instance, I could group by this is external. So certain walls might be tagged to be exterior walls. 
and we're going to start by selecting this example default wall. So it's a fairly generic wall, and that might be what we place initially. We're going to come back later and modify it and, and make it more specific to our project. But early on, perhaps you don't know all the materials and the, the data that you want on that wall. So we're going to use this width of six inches. I'm going to actually set the height to 15 feet. If you remember, our lobby floor was 15 feet. And at this point, that's all, all the data you can see. I can scroll down. There's a lot of different data we could put on this wall, but it's a little too early to know that information. So we're, we're going to basically stick with the width and the height. I'm going to come up to the top of the ribbon. This is what we call the placement ribbon. And there's different ways we could place that line, whether it's a line or it's an arc or a curve. Um, we're just going to use the line tool. So we're going to, as if we're drawing a line, we're going to be placing this wall. And then there's placement op options, which way you want the, the wall to be justified based on your line. And we're going to, to select the right justify. We can also put in an offset. So we're going to trace our grid here. And so given that we we'll probably have structural columns on that grid, and we really want our exterior wall to be a little bit outside of that grid. We're going to put in an offset of 8 inches, or 200 millimeters if you're working in millimeters. We're also, since we're going to come around and do the entire exterior of the building here, we're going to close the wall so that we get a basically a closed shape. Now, if you're working in metric, you'd probably want that width at 150 millimeters and you want the height at 4,500 millimeters. And then we're just going to, to place that wall. So we're going to use our grid, as I said, and we're going to use our AccuDraw. So I want to just start down here at my 00, zero origin. I just want to make sure I'm snapped at that intersection. So I've got that yellow X. When I see that, I can left click data point. You can see the AccuDraw compass. Now it looks like I have two walls and that's just because of the fact that we had that closed wall on it's showing both ends. Let me move this just a little bit out of the way. And then we're just going to come here and select this intersection and then this intersection and then this one over here. And then I just need to close it. So I don't even need to come back and select that that point again is just a right click to finish. Notice that there are prompts down here at the lower left. And there's our wall placed. Now we're going to place an additional wall for the building entry, which is going to pop out a little bit here from the, the rest of the building. We're going to use the exact same wall type. So we don't need to change anything here. We're going to use the same placement options. The only thing I'm going to change here is my close wall. We're going to turn that off. And this time, I'm going to come and work in the top view so that I can see my grid lines there. So we're going to place this between grid line B and C. Note that as I zoom in there, I can still see my grid bubbles. So I'm going to start here at the intersection of grid line C and 1. And again, I want to make sure I'm snapped to the grid line. Let's zoom in there, right? And then I'm going to, I want to come here and draw in that Y direction there. Notice how when I get that gray line on the axis, that means I'm on that axis. And I could just type in my dimension. So we want to come down here 4 feet or 1,200 millimeters. So I'm just going to type that in. You see how that then kind of locks the length of that wall, and then left click data point to accept that. And now I can turn the corner. Now in this case, a little trickier because I may not know this dimension. What I want to do is snap to that grid line, right? But I, I want to stay down here on this axis. So this is a case where I could type enter. Now that locks me on that x axis. Now I can come snap to that grid line and I stay on that axis. So I'm just going to snap to the grid line. And then the last point will be the intersection of B1. 
and then again a right click to reset. And now I've placed that wall. So we've placed the walls. In the next session, we'll do some cleanup and, and break that wall across there and then clean up the corners. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.